Hello, welcome back. Um, just thought we'd take this opportunity and show you guys how we do the dressing in our shop, how we dress timbers, um, and give you a little bit of insight on that. Uh, typically, we bring our timbers uh, to a mill, or sorry, to a planer, uh, four-sided planer, out, out, outside of here, and they, they run them through, and they come perfectly square and perfectly dressed, and uh, that's great. However, um, you know, if we have the odd timber that needs to be dressed, then this is the way we do it, basically. Um, and with being, that being said, you know, when you run a timber through a planer, it's not necessarily going to take out the hook or it won't take out the twist. So this is actually, in fact, the best way to straighten and plane and dress a timber. Uh, it takes a, lot, a little more time, obviously, and it takes a little something else and skill. But at the end of the day, if you have one of these planers, um, you can you can dress a timber perfectly. So what I say by dressing it perfectly is that basically we're going to be able to plane it, square it, and size it, so it's uh, so it's perfect in all those you know, and take the twist out if we have to, but we won't be doing that today. That's another video. So uh, I just want to go over a few of the tools that we're going to need basically to do this. Uh, we're going to need a planer, obviously. Um, this is a Malfell. Um, 12 inch planer, it's, it's, it's a pretty big beast, it's a beautiful tool. Um, they also, Makita also makes these as well and they're about half the price. Uh, so uh, you, can, you can, depending on budget, um, go from there. But a planer is essential I think in a shop, timber frame shop. You're going to need a level, it doesn't have to be a big level, just a, you know, a foot or a two footer. Uh, a good square, a chalk line, a brush, steel brush. Uh, and your safety equipment, obviously, eyes and ears. So, so the first thing you do um, is you just look over your timber, obviously, get, get a feel for what's going on. Um, you know, have a look over it, look for depressions, damage, stuff like that that you may want to hide. Um, you know, just kind of do it once over and uh, start throwing your square on here, just kind of feeling out what's going on, where's the square corner, what's not a square corner. I'm just kind of getting a feel what's going on. You're getting an idea of the sizing as well. This one's tapered, right? It goes from the quarter inch tapered, so we're gonna have to deal with that. Um, out of square, really bad corner here. Um, it's a little better on this side. So it's looking like this is a favorable corner to start on because you want to start on your squarest corner. It'll make life easier in the long run here. So I think that's going to be the corner. So flip that over. Okay. Cool. So this looks like the square's corner, which is great. I'm going to start on the flattest face first. Uh, sorry, the widest face. Um, and now that we know what the square corner is, we got to check and see if there's a twist in this thing. And the way you're going to do that is with the level. So you're going to go to one end, have a look. I've got a little. Uh, So it doesn't look like there's a twist in this piece. So that's great. And that's gonna save me a lot of time. Thumbs up for that. So after I've established that there's no twist, I've got my reference corner picked out. Then it's pretty much just uh, getting prepped for dressing. So what I do first of all is I just, I, planer baits aren't cheap, so I make sure I go over the timber and look for any kind of dirt, you know, rocks, anything, staples. They sometimes get mysteriously put into here. Once I've gone over my face, then uh, I just have a quick look again for any hooks or uh, twists. But we know there's not a twist, but any hooks or crooks and so forth. You look pretty good. So again, with the square and getting the reference corner defined here is uh, I'm going to look here and 
as you can see, this came from the mill pretty nice and square, this corner anyways. If you come over to this corner, you'll see that uh, that's not too square. So we're dealing with a bit of an issue there, but we can clean that up later. But uh, this is a nice reference corner to start. And again, I check it in three places. The ends and the middle. And it all looks pretty consistent, so I know that uh, we're in good shape there. Okay, I just want to go over a few little things with the planer. Um, I'm not going to get too into blade setup and all that, but again, you want sharp blades. Sharp blades for every tool. Um, if you don't have sharp blades on this, what's going to happen is when you, when you hit a knot, something hard, or even a hard piece of, you know, section of the wood, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lift and then you're going to basically now start creating an unplaned surface which is exactly, you know, going against what you're trying to do, right? So, so you want sharp blades, really important. Um, when you're zeroing out your blades, basically uh, meaning that uh, when you set your blades originally, um, the, the concept is to have your blade flush or the same height or even plane as the back surface. Um, I go just a hair more and I mean just a hair more. Uh, that way I have a little more bite and I like that and uh, it helps in the long run and we'll get more into that later but just uh, wanted to make that an important aspect in setting the plane up. Okay, so now that we're ready to plane, I'm at my first pass is going to be a light pass. I don't want to take off too much, I just want to do a nice skim and it's just going to take off all the high points and some of the crap on top of the timber and uh, that will give me a nice, a nice uh, starting point. So I've got this, uh, the first face I've got plain here. I'm putting my eye down it and it has a, a little bit of a hump to it, but that's okay. We're going to get that out later. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I've got that pretty much figured out. So this timber started off as a 10 by 12 and I'd like to make it a uh, nine and a half by eleven and a half nominal. So basically, I'm be taking off a half inch all the way around. So now that I got this first face plane, now I want to now move to my reference, my other reference edge, which is on this side. But before I do that, I'm going to string a line because that's going to give me a nice straight reference to plane to. So I've got my two little points marked out. I'm just coming an eighth under. It doesn't have to be any measurement in particular though. It needs to be, you can't go under basically. So I'm just working, right now I've got about 12 inches. And since I'm gonna be at the end of the day making it 11 and a half, then I have pretty much a quarter inch on each side. But all I'm really doing is grabbing a reference. So I can make this top nice and straight. Perfect. Now that I have that line, I'm gonna do a plane here. So I've done my second pass on my reference corner and although it was pretty square, it wasn't exactly square. So it looks to me like, yeah, we're about a 32nd at a square, maybe, maybe almost a 16th. So how do we get that out with the planer? Well, this is a shim. 
And what I've done is I've custom made shims for this planer. So how they work is they clip on, they clip on wherever you want to put them, all the way up the face, either side. And what they do is they act as a shim. They shim the one side of the base, which lifts the other side, which gives you a uh, uneven cutting surface, which will then achieve a, uh, you know, achieve that technique uh, of taking one, taking more material off one side than the other. So, since I've already gone over my timber and evaluated which corner was high, which is this corner, then I basically throw the shim onto here. Now, depending on how much I have to take off is going to be where I locate this shim. The further I push it in towards the center of the timber, the more it's going to take off the corner. So that's the high point. So this shim actually goes on this side. So one way of getting this exact is to get your square and throw your shim underneath it and see where it ends. Pretty much ends there. From that point, I kind of create a mark, measure over. It's about three inches. Now, now that we have the shim in place, you're going to want to make sure you keep pressure on the side of the planer that is going to be taking off the meat, okay? You don't want this the thing to start teetering all over the place because it's going to screw up your whole cut. So, and you want to do a decent bite out of there, so make sure you get enough. All right, so I just went in about six inches just to see. Look at that, it's perfect now. You can see where it's taking more off than that side. And you put on your timber and it's, it's, it's perfect. So I now know that I have the shim in the right location. And I can carry on. perfectly square. We now have a perfectly square and straight top. This is where it all starts and if you get these two corners good and you have a nice straight top then it's all downhill from here. Okay now that we've got our two two edges we've got a reference corner uh, defined nice and square. It's, gonna, it's time to start sizing so again I'm going to snap a line, lay out a point
Okay, there's our line. Now, this piece is tapered. Starts heavy, kind of gets slim, and then it fires off again, and it kind of flares at the end. So, there's gonna be a little bit of a technique to get this size. So what you're gonna really have to work on and focus on is, is, uh, is the dials and how to adjust the, the, uh, the, uh, the depth as you're planing. So this is where finesse comes in and kind of feeling out where you're at. So we've got our line snapped for our straightness, to, our, to follow that straight line, and we have a bit of a hunk in it, but we also are quite a bit out of square, quarter inch to be exact, or a quarter inch out of square. So, Pretty much, we're just gonna do the same thing with the shim that I showed you before, but we just gotta do it a few more times. So, this time with the shim, I'm gonna put it further up towards the middle of the planer, which means that it's gonna be taking off more meat. And We'll get our first one down and go from there. Okay, so I've done about four passes, quick. And as you can see, we're good. We were a quarter inch out of square and now we're, we're bang on square. So the, the shim, keep in mind, this is about a, a 30 second of an inch, a heavy 30 seconds. So, so when you locate that shim on the square, say you have to take down a 16th then you know you gotta do roughly two heavy passes with this on the edge. The more you bring it in, the more, the more you'll be able to get out of it on the planer because it tilts the planer. Just wanted to go over that with you. We've got our line snapped here. We're back into sizing again. So as you see, it's pretty consistent. It's about a quarter inch all the way down. When you get to here, it flares out a little bit. It goes more to like three-eighths of an inch. So what I do is I make little indications. I know it's consistent to here, so I'm just gonna put a line across here. And that's an indication for me to start applying more depth to the planer. And what I'll do is a line, a line for me is an indication to go down a 32nd of an inch. So if I wanna start going up or down, I can basically go plus or minus. These are plus lines, straight. If I want to do minus, I'll go across like that. And that's just giving me a bit of an idea on how to work the depth of the planer as I go. I tapered it off. And this is our first edge for actually sizing. So I'm just gonna make a, have a look here. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Perfect. Okay. Looks pretty great. So that's perfectly sized. Now it's time to throw this size over. We need this now to be 11 and a half. So we're just gonna repeat it. Repeat the same step here.
So there you go. It's uh, perfectly squared dressed timber right now. We're all good to go. So this is how you do it. Uh, this is how you make a perfectly square uh, straight timber with the planer. Just like that. You don't need to necessarily ship them out to four sided planers. And it's a great alternative to square rule layout. Um, I've done square rule layout for years. Um, I was shown this by a wise old German, uh, this method, and his philosophy was like, start off perfect and uh, your work will be perfect. And uh, I really like this philosophy. Um, it is a bit tricky. It will take you a few times to kind of nail this down. I've been doing this for 20 years, but uh, once you get it, then it will take as much time to plane this perfectly square and dress it perfectly square than it does to lay out a timber at the end of the day. And it's, it's perfectly sized and precise. So, uh, and then it helps everything go a lot smoother with joinery and everything. So it's a great alternative to square rule layout. Um, since we have modern tools and different ways of doing things, it, it gives us that ability and that option. So thanks a lot. I hope this helped out. And um, if you want to see how to take a twist out of a timber, if you have any interest in that, just do some comments. Just let me know and we'll do a nice uh, video on how to take a twist out of a timber. It will be a little more in depth. So we'll, uh, we'll have to dig right into that one. So thanks a lot for joining us and uh, we'll see you again soon.